Okay, so I'm David with the Digital Dudes Podcast. I'm here with Jenny. Um, I always do the inflection on the end of your name, Jenny. I don't know why. Like, Just feels right. Yeah, I don't know. I don't want to make a bad Forrest Gump joke or something, but I always like inflect to the back end. Growing up, did you get that problem like when Forrest Gump came out where people hit me with it? Uh, it happened like in college. Like it never really happened like in my younger years, it happened a lot in college though. So weird time. That's strange. <laughs> yeah. Cause you would have been, what, well, when was Forrest Gump? Was that 96? I think it was 94 maybe. First of all, I didn't know why wow, you nailed it. 94. I didn't know Forrest had two R's in it. Um, Forrest does have two. Yeah. It's got, it's a great movie, but 94, how, what, what, uh, dare you, dare you say what grade you were in in 94? Uh, zero. I was born in 94. So good. Google <laughs> Moogly. Wow. I was afraid that might happen. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, uh, 8.8 .8 on IMDb. So All right. I assume you've seen it now by this point. Oh yeah. It's a great movie. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome movie. Well, I don't, I am inflecting the end of your name for some reason. I don't know why, but, um, Jenny today you're here to talk about Spotify and, Spotify advertising, programmatic audio. Give me a quick highlight. What do we hit in this episode? You've got 12 seconds. We, cool. We hit targeting, uh, different KPIs, kind of best practices. And then uh, we talk a lot about sourdough. So be prepared. Yeah. We talk about Reed and his wife, Miranda and her sourdough recipe. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, if it interests you and you want to know how Spotify works, stay tuned. Yeah. Okay, Reed. So you were in, uh, I'll say our pre-production meeting, which is the <laughs> oh, 65 yeah. seconds before we start the, the, the recording. You were just saying that Miranda has just learned how to make sourdough and that, uh, was it Revenge of the Nerds where they had the popcorn or something that exploded the house? What was that? That was, uh, wow. I can't believe you just brought that up. That's a uh, real genius with Val Kilmer. Re yeah, there you go. Real gene. Is this what happened? Where like you, it was spilling out your kitchen windows? We were moving that direction for sure. Um, and uh, you know, I was just sharing with you guys that she put the the marker, so you just put a line on it. The mason jar was about half full, and when we got up the next morning, it was all over the counter and just looked like a sci fi film. Um, and if we had neglected it for probably a couple more hours, yeah, I. I think it would have been oozing out the windows of our house and our girls like completely flipped out screaming, you know, didn't know what to make out of it. And Miranda's like, just got this huge smile on her face and is like doing her end zone dance, you know, which is a pretty goofy dance, but she had her hands up, you know, <laughs> pumping at the air. She's like success. And so that immediately got sent out to all the, the moms in the neighborhood. And so it was a couple weeks in the making, but now we got like a surplus of sourdough. So <laughs> If and when we get back to the office, it could be sourdough city, like, you know, as far as the treats I bring, because I had well, sourdough what? spawned uh, pancakes this morning. They were good. They were a little bit, you know, heavier on texture. So it tasted like wheat pancakes. And then I just was wolfing down some baguettes, uh, but I had to soak it pretty heavily in balsamic vinegar and olive oil to be able to actually get through the outer shell because she has a little work to do on that part. Well, what, what, what's. Who was like the, the, isn't there like some germination? Like someone has to provide you there. This is my great grandmother's yeast, like treat it well. And yeah. that's what you oh, use. Oh, hundred percent. A hundred percent. I don't, it should be like an ancestry.com, you know, like where did the sourdough act, actually originate from? <laughs> because it came from a house up the road, this chick that's actually running for like a house seat or something. And she's <laughs> always cooking and, you know, pushing out, you know, whatever recipes, all sorts of content. She's like the alpha, alpha female in the, in the neighborhood. And it just trickles, you know, throughout and spreads. The next thing I know, you know, Miranda at like midnight, I'm sitting next to her, like streaming and she's like buried in her phone. I'm like, what the hell is going on? She's like, I'm going to make sourdough. Somebody's going to pass me. Like we're going to get somebody else's bacterial, like, you know, experiment like <laughs> uh, tomorrow in the house. Next thing I know, there's freaking Mason jars all over the place. And, uh, 
Uh, yeah, two weeks later, bingo, man. I got a happy wife. What, happy wife, happy what, life. What, how did she know? I mean, I hear you the marking on the mason jar, but the way you explain it is as if, as if like it's the volcano in science fair where you drop the thing in and then it explodes. So how, she just knew that it was like, today's the day I feel it in my bones. She was seeing the bubbling. Like it is like a volcano. I told her she should name it Krakatoa because it, you could just see that <laughs> it was starting. It was starting to get there. Like it was going to erupt. And the gal across the street that gave us her jar um, did in fact start to like, you know, quickly grow. And so we moved it into a giant flower vase and then it seemed to like, not like that. So they're very temperamental. And according to Miranda, like <laughs> just by moving one atmosphere to the other, literally on the same freaking block that you could have unhappy bacteria. And so that's exactly what happened. And then she was depressed. Cause she's like, you know, Oh shit, what is this going to mean for my, my two babies? And I was like, we'll see. And they just kind of like, you know, seem dormant for a few days. And then, yeah, like yesterday was, you know, big, big time, like firecrackers over our house. So this I don't know if great. we're going to, I don't know if we're going to pay this forward, you know, to anybody else, but right now Miranda just got a hell of a lot of baking to do to try and keep up with the, this crazy bacteria. And there's a yeast shortage. So this is like, we're not the only ones. <laughs> I just found this out. That there's a major yeast shortage. So I was like, I'll go pick some up. And she's like, they're all out. It's like toilet paper, like six weeks later, you know? So, um, yeah, we'll see if they, they get the stores re restocked. But anyways, that's enough about sour. Well, <laughs> Let's get on. Jenny. Uh, I don't think I've ever, ever heard. Have Sorry, you ever done sour doing any yeast growing yourself? No, I just sat through Reads 101, so that was that was my introduction. Yeah, now she's prepared. I think that went as far as 104, Jenny. Come on, give me a little credit. Yeah, that was uh, I, I detailed. Right past, I loved it. Right past 101. You did. Well, Reed, how do you how do we segue from yeast into Spotify? Whoa, that's a tough <laughs> one. Um, an exploding new opportunity in multifamily. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Solid, solid. You're on point. Thank you. <laughs> well, obviously we have a, a guest here today. We have Jenny. Thank you, Jenny. Um, uh, coming to tell us about uh, Spotify with advertisement and how it applies to apartments. So at this point, Jenny, I think you've probably run at least a half dozen campaigns for Spotify, maybe, maybe more. Yeah, I'd say probably like 15, 20 of them. Oh, okay. Well, quite a bit more than a half dozen. That puts it so, straight to the 104. Yep. <laughs> so this, so we're here to first talk about what the heck is programmatic audio in Spotify. Um, well, Reed, I feel like you just sent me some word tracking a second ago, so I shouldn't steal your thunder. How are you explaining it these days? Just great targeted branding opportunity for, in particular, lease ups, but also rehabs. You know, that are trying to rebrand their properties. Like, uh, you know, this this medium, if you will, uh, our opportunity wasn't really. I think available even just a few years ago, um, outside of some of the larger agencies, you know, the, the Madison, you know, uh, Madison Avenue, like type agencies. Um, and a lot of that was just based on spend levels. Um, and it being so new that it hadn't really trickled down and that happens a lot with multifamily, but, um, you know, now that, you know, the buy ins a lot lower, uh, and frankly, some of the targeting has advanced, uh, it seemed like a good opportunity for us to do some testing and then potentially introduce it to our clients. So I just think it's a really cool way and it's got the cool factor. I mean, we all know that, like just hearing your brand on, on Spotify or on the radio is pretty sweet. So I think it appeals to owners, operators, you know, obviously they geek out on that stuff too, but we actually saw really great results and we knew and Jenny knew and she you know, set it up right. Just let's make sure we're measuring beyond just the number of impressions served. But that's where we were really pleased not to steal her thunder. I'll definitely let her talk through more in detail the case study, but uh, just how it had affected like overall traffic. Um, so I think it's a great tactic, again, for an affordable price to, to complement or stitch together with some of the other like bottom funnel, like, uh, you know, platforms. Yeah. So programmatic audio is just being able, similar to like programmatic display, you're just able to run audio spots across, um, like whether it's iHeartRadio or different things like that, Pandora. Um, we looked in, in 
tested um, some of those other programmatic uh, spots. Spot of, or Pandora is too expensive as a, as a starting point point for apartments, and then iHeartRadio has some. I I'll just say I know I do. I don't know if Jenny does, but I have some concerns around the uh, legitimacy or the the bot traffic that that is related. So we ended up getting um, hooked up with Spotify and Spotify has a pretty easy entry point. We're able to get in for as low as for us, we can run it for folks for as low as 500 bucks. Um, and that includes producing the spot. So we'll help copyright a spot. The spot lasts 30 seconds. And then um, someone on our team like Jenny here is able to, to run that spot um, across the different targeting that someone may, may be interested in. So that's my setup, Jenny. Um, I think it'd be really helpful for you to just talk through some of the like campaign setup and, and targeting capabilities. Like, and I know we can't use all of the capabilities due to fair housing, but from the capabilities we can use, how, what are we able to set up today? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would say Spotify targeting isn't as granular as like we're going to see on Google ads or anything like that. It's, definitely more in the preliminary stages. Um, you're able to do just kind of the general age, gender, location. Um, and some of those are restricted for us in terms of fair housing. Um, what thing? One thing that makes Spotify super unique is the type of targeting that you can do um, a little bit lower in the funnel. So there's genre, interest, and then real-time context targeting. Um, so your genre is just going to be like if you're trying to target someone who um, is really into classic rock, or maybe you're selling country boots and you're only going to try and target people that are listening to country music. Um, that's the first one. Uh, second one is interest-based targeting. So that's just anybody um, that has an interest based on their listening behavior. So that could be anything from like different types of playlists that they're listening to, or even different types of spot uh, podcasts they're listening to on the Spotify platform. And then uh, last one is real-time contextual targeting. So anything from like running, studying, um, and all of that information is basically um, taken from playlists and just uh, different types of behavior on the Spotify app. Well, that's great. Uh, Reed, I know you came from, obviously you have a background in radio. So I feel like it would be, I just want to toss it to you real quick and talk about the differences that you've seen so far with Spotify versus radio. And you can start with targeting or, or creative, but however you want to go with it. Yeah, well, uh, the terrestrial radio, as they called it, and I think still do, just meaning what I guess we grew up with. And of course, I'm a senior citizen now, so that's not really, the, <laughs> I guess, fair statement. But, um, you know, what you listen to driving down the car, like um, your favorite radio stations, whatever, that uh, that is built really on, uh, as we talk genres, like just styles of music, right? So you make assumptions with classic rock that you're talking to a 35 to 50-year-old male. Um, when you listen to adult contemporary, that, you know, that's a broader spectrum, um, but you know, that, uh, basically there's very set. Um, and I think this still applies with, uh, Spotify, but age brackets, things like that. Again, we, you have to be careful because of the fair housing, but I'm just saying the, the targeting is all built around demos and formats. And then you have like morning shows and things like that. And, um, you know, it's still a very effective, powerful medium. I, I'm, you know, usually say that just about all advertising, if it's done right, it's, you can still be effective. It doesn't mean it'll be your best ROI. Um, and that's what I think really prompted, um, you know, a lot of this programmatic audio is that it wasn't showing to be, you know, the most effective like ROAS that, you know, folks could get. They wanted to, you know, have the proverbial, I guess, scalpel versus, you know, a an axe or a hatchet. And that's what uh, programmatic or digital audio delivers is instead of like having to throw this, cast this huge net right over like a metro, which is what happens when you advertise on the airwaves, uh, you can now uh, drill down and potentially pick, you know, zip code or, you know, county, things like that. Um, and that's, that's where there's all sorts of advantages. And then also over the airwaves and not to make this like pros and cons, but that's kind of what you're asking me is there's very little reporting you can offer back with the airwaves. So all you're really saying is, Hey, based on, you know, the sampling that we've done, you know, the stats that we have on our audience, this is what you can expect as far as a reach and frequency. And it's really just projected. There's, re there's no way, you know, to say with confidence that that's in fact what you got out of that spot. Whereas with Spotify and, and digital audio, um, you are going to get, 
very granular stats like Jenny was talking about. So you'll, you'll know the impressions, um, you'll have a better handle on reach and frequency and, and you'll also have a better idea on, on what's happening with the website traffic. So there's, there's a lot of reasons this makes sense. You still are going to have a hard time getting a broader, well, if that's what you're looking for, broader audience, but you know, I think it's really well suited. Obviously we wouldn't be, you know, exploring and doing this if we didn't think so, but I think it's uh, really well suited for multifamily based on those constrained budgets. Yeah, when I when I um I guess when we first were going to run this test starting in last December, I didn't have a lot of confidence. I was like, shoot, man, I've tried these crazy things before, programmatic audio, over the top video, that sort of thing, and I was like, I just don't know. And then um when uh, the price point was able to get lowered and then um, particularly around the, the geo targeting. So the geo targeting was a big concern for me before, but now that we can start to get pretty finite with with this on Spotify, it seems to work well. And just to hit, by the way, and I'll pass it to, to Jenny here in a second, but um, I know there's been a lot of concern, like, well, doesn't everybody pay for Spotify? So who the heck is getting commercials? But the last stats I looked up, Spotify's US president presence is only 40% of the active users on Spotify are on paid plans. So at least 60% of the folks on unpaid. And as far as the income distribution, I don't have super solid numbers there, but it 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 looks like from what I can gather, and I was looking at their public um, stock filing, their, their SEC statements and such, and it doesn't look like it means that only wealthy people are paying for it and there's no, you know, the the less wealthy folks are not paying for it. It seems like it's pretty evenly distributed. So all, all I mean to say is there's lots of folks in the US that are not paying for Spotify that are going to get these ads. And then uh, tossing back to Jenny, I think Reed started to mention some of the stats. So I think it'd be healthy here to, to talk through what what stats you were looking for for campaign performance. It's like, great, let's say I throw 500 bucks at a campaign. What should I expect um, You know, with this ad? Yeah, for sure. Um, I was really pleasantly surprised with kind of the metrics and KPIs that we were able to find just through all of the campaigns we did. Um, First and foremost, my most shocking was the CPM. Um, So that's cost per thousand impressions. And I was expecting it to be extremely high. Um, We benchmarked within all of our campaigns between $17 and $20. Um, So I think that's phenomenal, phenomenal just to get that many impressions for that little cost. Um, secondly, click through rate, uh, 0.30 to 0.40. Again, we're not able to track any of the view through conversions, um, from Spotify, but we are able to track the click conversions and we saw pretty strong CTRs, um, pretty in line with just standard display. Um, and then our CPC was at $12, which I was also pretty impressed with. Um, so those are just kind of the metrics within the Spotify platform, Um, But some really cool things that we saw with Google Analytics was just a super big increase in traffic during the time that um, we were running uh, audio spots. And then also the bounce rate for Spotify specifically was super low. So um, definitely qualified traffic coming to the site. And I think it's kind of it it shows um, a lot of intent when somebody's actually leaving the Spotify platform and going to your website, which um, I, again, was just pleasantly surprised with the click through rate. So. All good things. Yeah. I was um, really surprised because I frankly expected like, look, I know I'm not a normal person, but <laughs> I sure as heck aren't the normal music listener. And so if I do ever listen to music, it's like if I'm doing like a really rough workout. Um, but besides that, it's like, you know, you guys know I'm all audiobooks and podcasts. So when I saw that the click through rate was besting a lot of the other platforms we've seen, I was just my socks were knocked off because that means somebody they're if they're probably listening to Spotify on their phone, that means they open the app, they look at the ad, the companion ad unit that goes with it. So it's a thirty second audio spot, but then there's a banner ad that accompanies it that takes it's a full full screen takeover basically, and then they're clicking on that ad to go to the website. And then um, I don't know if you just mentioned this, Jenny, because I was looking up the stats I had, but it looks like. Um, we're having folks that once they click through the ad, they spend 37 seconds, like between 30 and 40 seconds on the website. Yeah, that's crazy. Again, like I'm, <laughs> I'm listening to Spotify doing something else. Why am I, I'm stopping what I'm doing to go to a website for 30 seconds. Like that's pretty crazy. Well, bear in mind, and we used to say this cause I was starting to sell a lot of digital audio, uh, before I made the transition over, um, to, uh, to the statesman, like to funny enough, the newspaper, I was like going backwards in time. Um, 
but it is just that it's, you know, the, the soundtrack of somebody's day, especially at the workplace. So a lot of, uh, I guess a lot of radio reps, I'll say, uh, and now these digital audio, um, reps are push that where it's like, realize that a lot of people do, and it may be somewhat background music, but at the same time, like they will just listen to these playlists or, or listen to the radio while they're at the workplace or whether they're working from home now. And so, uh, I'm bringing this up because that's why it's not as surprising to me that they did shift over quickly because they're just on their laptops. Um, it's less likely on the, on, on a mobile phone, but not impossible either. Right. If they're like riding in the passenger seat or whatever, hopefully they're not doing it while they're driving, but it's not hard to just quickly peek over, click on that companion banner and, 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 and take a quick look at the, at the property. So not stunning to me, but, uh, still pleasantly surprised like the three of us were with the outcome. Yeah. Well, um, Jenny, what's, what's your overall take on this now that you've run, as you said, like 20 different campaigns? Yeah. Um, my take on it is it's just a really good deal. Like Spotify is going to produce a really great spot for you. That's universal. You could use that on radio or wherever you really need, um, really good KPIs, really good metrics. Um, and yeah, I, I love it personally. And the data on the back end in terms of Google analytics was really strong. Uh, my only kind of critique is hopefully they can get some sort of like pixel attached to uh, some of their audio so we can get some of the view through data on that. Um, Cause I think we're definitely missing a good majority of that. Just only looking at the click through data. Um, but other than that, yeah, I'm, I really love it. I encourage it. I think it's great for anybody who needs brand awareness in a certain area. Um, like Reed was saying, lease ups. Um, yeah, I'm a fan. Cool. Well, I guess I almost skipped over one thing. You had talked about the targeting about musical interest and things like that. Um, for the reporting, I was pretty impressed uh, what you were able to pull back through. Like, even though we're not targeting by age, income, demographic, you are getting all of that stuff on the back end. Yep. Yeah. You can see pretty granularly into uh, the distribution of whether it's gender, age, or kind of whatever device they're using. Um, you can see the percentages of which impressions served where, um, but you can't see much past that. Like you can't see if someone age 27 clicked through your ad. Um, that's all kind of protected. Right. So you would get high level stats like, Hey, you know, 60% of the people are female that are, that are, you know, listening to these ads and they click X hundred times ba based on your budget. And, um, you know, they were often on their mobile phone or whatever. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And then obviously you can get a little bit more granular if you attach UTM parameters on the end of your URL and you can get some of that backend GA data. Yeah. Well, read it. Any final parting things here? Yeah. Um, so Jenny mentioned that they do a nice job of producing the spot. Uh, but to be clear, that does not include writing the spot and that that's really important. Um, you know, I, I, I learned that, I don't want to say the hard way per se, but um, I took that for granted, I guess, when I first got into radio. Um, and naturally, any of the creative types would would scoff at that. Um, but it, it really is in particularly important with, I think, radio spots because you have such a finite amount of time. You know, this isn't, uh, and you can't over rely, there is no visuals, right? So you, you can't rely on that. So you really have to be spot on. And there's just a few best practices that I think are worth sharing um, that, that we've tried to incorporate when with, with the campaigns we've been running. And, and one of those, I mean, and it maybe is an obvious one, but how many times should you try to mention your brand, right? Because you don't want to like, I guess, throw it up too many times. It, it just junks up the spot. So what is the sweet spot? Typically we're, and I don't know if Jenny said this, but we're running 30 second spots and you definitely want to get the brand in at least twice. And typically, you know, you start with it and you end with it because uh, you want them, that to be the first thing that they hear uh, in the event that they may bounce out of the spot. Um, but if they do listen to all the way through, then you get to start with it and you close with it. And, you know, if you can get convenient enough or not convenient, but creative enough, uh, you can w uh, weave in the URL, especially if it's the same name as the property and you can get kind of three mentions. So it might be, you know, um, opening with it, uh, then you, you, you squeeze it in the middle and then you close with the URL. And what you're really trying to do is get as much recall and retention 
uh, radio in particular is all about reach and frequency. And the good news, like Jenny said, is, is that often people are going to be listening to the same kind of genres and that's one way to get at them. And if that's the case, then you got a good shot at getting them again. Um, but it just depends on your budget as for how realistic that is on, on these Spotify campaigns. Um, and then, uh, call to actions are really important. Um, and, and remembering that you, it's kind of a one-to-one marketing environment. Uh, meaning that you get to talk to them in a little bit more casual fashion. And I think that's also a cool opportunity. You want to make it sound more conversational. Um, uh, but, you know, if you have a concession, great thing right now. There's a lot of those out there, obviously, with COVID-19. So um, that would be smart to incorporate. Hey, you know, right now and create a sense of urgency for a limited time this month. You know, there's $200 off uh, your 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 rent or a full month off, whatever. Um, and then... Um, as far as the uh, goal around frequency, uh, you know, when it came to the terrestrial, but I don't think it really changes for uh, digital audio, you're shooting for like a two to five X like frequency that, that that's your best shot at making sure that you're really kind of sticking with that listener. Um, so it can happen with Spotify. If you stretch too thin, where you're only getting like a one X uh, meaning like one time within the campaign or certainly one time within 24 hours. So you really want to try to keep driving that message in there. Um, but we got some some good folks on staff and also some subcontractors that we've worked with that are very capable as far as producing those spots. And it's not meant to be a plug. It's just it's true. Like you really have to know what you're doing in order to, I think, effectively pull pull off these uh, these uh, campaigns. And that frequency, is that on a monthly basis or weekly, daily? Um, well, typically on the schedules, it was weekly based. So they, you would try to get a two, five X would be kind of insane. Um, but if you got anything less than like a 1.5 in a given week, then that was, that was not that great. Uh, you know, it's not considered like wasteful money, but just unlikely that you really, uh, made, made an impression with them. And, uh, again, that, that's kind of hit or miss right now. I think Jenny's still figuring out herself, like how to really drive that and balance it because you also don't want to just be talking to the same, like 200 people. Um, that's not the idea of branding a, a property, right? So it's just striking, striking the balance, but, um, good number to orient her in again is, is to try and get to two X each week. And certainly, um, you know, after a couple of weeks, you, you want to make sure that that's what you're hitting. And I hate to bounce <laughs> guys, but um, I'm actually running just a tad late for our accountant, um, which isn't going to be quite such a fun conversation I'm expecting. I don't think he's going to want to hear about my sourdough. So, Ask him uh, if, if our bank account will do like the sourdough. Is okay. it just going <laughs> to overflow <laughs> and spill we'll out? Do. We'll do. All, All right. right. Well, Jenny, I love you. Uh, I think you're doing great with it. You know, uh, we... We, we entrust or we trust in Jenny, whatever I'm trying to say. <laughs> All right. That's I'll good. See you guys. <laughs> I'm out. Bye. Bye. Well, Jenny, um, I guess we'll wrap up here. I'm going to, um, well, yeah. Any final thing before we, we at least end this podcast? Um, I guess this is like kind of funny. Like you can really choose whatever accent you want for your audio actor, which I found hilarious. Like you can choose British or Australian North American. Um, we just like rolled with like female North American, but um, there's lots Boring. of options out there. So <laughs> yeah, I still yeah. go with go with an accent, make it even more memorable. Yeah, we could do like an A/B test with the North American versus like English or something. Yeah, fun trivia tidbit for those that <clears throat> well for those that don't know is that Digible. Uh, if you ever call our um, office phone, you'll get a British woman. Um, just because, well, you guys will just have to call it and hope I don't pick up. Um, but we, (laughs) that was like in the first year of the company, we hired a British woman just to, uh, do our voicemail for us. So, uh, yeah, call the digital line if you want to hear that. I definitely never heard that. You haven't heard that? No. Oh my God. I can't believe you've been (laughs) here. You've been here long enough to hear that. You got to call the office line sometime. I know. Maybe I'll do it after this. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, thank you, Jenny, for coming on. I'm going to let us get out of here today, but this was helpful. I appreciate it. Sounds good.